When he is real small, then show no particular interest in music. Just one of the mill playing in the dirt, uh, trucks, or uh, things of that sort. Well, he is ruffled around with his friends because he, uh, one time, he played with uh, football and uh, I don't see, the little league, uh, the Fighting Irish, you know, the team. But, uh, like, um, I need to play baseball and things of that sort. But uh, ordinarily, he, he was no loud and boisterous type. He just sat back, play it cool. He was rough around with them, kid, and tease and all that, but he was just on the kind of the quiet side. When he was going to school, he didn't make a whole lot of battle scenes, the football scenes, and things that I saw it sketching through the books. Uh, well, I used to do that too, and I got picked up that from my older brother. And, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I remember this one. <laughs> uh, this one. You can be with me sleeping on this. The couch that I would just came from I had this couch for oh, many years. As a matter of fact, I think I went and bought it at St. Duval's or Salvation Army one time. And uh, oh, that was when I lived on Yesterday and before Jimmy went and hired me and all that. So uh, uh, he said, used to sit on this playing his guitar and while he had the uh, records playing on that uh, record player there and plunking away watching TV and playing the guitar. A young teenager, I don't know, was around 12 or 13, that's when he kind of taken an interest in music and uh, I got him this guitar and he just went on from there. Well, I was glad that he taken up the guitar. I mean, it kept him off the streets. He played it constantly, practically all the time. He might leave at home sometime and go out and bed, go somewhere or something like that, but he was plunking on that guitar all the time. James Thomas, well, he had a lot of instruments and he kind of acted as the, uh, agent for the kid, like, uh, uh, get different uh, gigs for him, for uh, maybe parties, um, weddings, maybe, or picnics, I think, or uh, dances. And uh, he'd get a gig for a certain amount of them, maybe four or five guys to come and play at some place and all that. So that's where Jimmy he went, got his early start in playing with them. One night when Jimmy was playing in the group, oh, during the intermission, uh, he just set his guitar up there on the stage and somebody ran up, grabbed it, and ran out of the place. And so he was a little scared to tell me about him losing his guitar and he always told me he left it over at uh, James Thomas's place but I found out later that he got it stolen and so I said well he was going to have to <laughs> he's going to be tireless, get tireless for a while so <laughs> that's the way it was so I went and got him one later on it made me feel good and uh, he'd taken a real serious interest in it, so I figured he was going to be uh, some uh, great musician. I don't know if he, oh, the way he did become, I mean, uh, it was greater than what I anticipated. Well, I told him one time uh, when he was learning how to play, I said, well, when you start playing the guitar, 
and you go uh, kind of get into it. I tell you, do something original. I tell you, people will pay attention to that and come out something different, whatever it is. And he sure enough did. He would call me from England and I was surprised. Uh, I didn't know anybody in England and he told me, he said, well, Dad, it looks like I'm on my way to the big time. He said, right now I think I'm auditioning for a bass player and a uh, uh, trumpet. And uh, I'm gonna have a call, I'm gonna have a threesome group. Uh, call the name of uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience. And I'm gonna spell my name J I M I. And I said, hey, that's pretty cool. And uh, oh, he's all excited. Some hippies are living right next door to us. And um, I happened to hear this music coming through the wall, as of the wall this way now. And I said, hey, that sounds like Jimmy. Well, Jimmy at one time told me that uh, that was before it became the experience that he was going to start singing. He said, everybody else is singing. He said, oh, hey. he said you know, Dad, he said, I don't have no voice. He said, <laughs> and, uh, I said, I know that. And so he said, but everybody is just up there hollering and thing. you don't know what they're saying anyhow. So, uh, but what surprised me is when I heard this music coming through the wall that uh, I said, hey, I said, I said to my wife, I said, I sound like Jimmy. And I never heard Jimmy ever sing before. <laughs> but uh, the music, and I never heard his music since he became the experience. And she said, well, I'll go over there and find that. I said, oh, no, no, don't do that. Yeah, but anyway, she went over there and uh, talked to the people and told them who we were and that. Yeah, and they came over and gave me the record. And they were so surprised. And they just bought it that day, but they wouldn't give it to me. And I, of course, I wasn't worried out. I said, here it was, Jimmy. Shortly after that, I started to uh, and some of these uh, music magazines on my stepdaughter as well. See, there was a picture of Jimmy there, and uh, it was a big apple and all that. <laughs> and so uh, I said, well, I said, man, he is going somewhere. So I, I've been following along ever since after I found out about him, had the experience. And they already kept me in touch. You know, well, they, they gave me a schedule of all the different places where he'd be playing at. And um, they had a tight schedule. Uh, they just had to be on the road all the time. And after the first time he came here, uh, it had been five years. And see, that was 1968. And, and, I actually went down there to out there at the airport to meet him, and I just couldn't quite get over the excitement. Just thinking about it, it's been all that long time, and Jimmy he's excited over it too. He kept saying, "Yeah, five years, Dad, since I've been home." Though we always been in touch with each other, but uh, to see him again had the experience and all those people around there, I said, well, all these people all coming down here, news reporters, photographers and that, all for Jimmy. I said, my son Jimmy, I said, yeah, this is something. <laughs> Though Jimmy, he is used to it, but that was the first time for me. And I was surprised with his uh, antics. I mean, the way he got up there and he did a few tumbles and such, and that was all new to me. I mean, I said, well, he's got some of the old Hendrix showmanship, and <laughs> though he never did do any death. Uh, he 
he started playing at us for the time I ever <laughs> hear him play it. And uh, well, I started scooting down my feet. I thought, wow, we'd like, like to get arrested for the way he's playing. <laughs> and I looked around and everybody was cheering and everything. <laughs> I thought, well, I guess it's okay. <laughs> He has a great son. <laughs> he really made his mark. Uh, you know, he told me one day, he said, someday daddy said, I'm gonna be, uh, he's gonna be famous. And I told him, I said, I said, well, hurry up, I'm getting tired of working out there. <laughs> we were kidding. Yeah, that was the last 